Dragon Quest is one of my favorite series. They are great pick-up-and-play JRPGs with a great sense of adventure, along with an amazing cast of characters and fun music to go through your journey with. Today, however, I want to talk about the Dragon Quest spin-off games. There are some really cool ones that may have been overlooked by others, so I want to highlight them. Now, I'm just going over the physical games I have, though, along with one that I do have digitally. So, yeah, there won't be games like, say, Dragon Quest Theater Rhythm or things like that. Just, yeah, the ones I have, so... Yeah, let me know in the comments which Dragon Quest spin-off you enjoyed the most, and with that, let's begin with the two Fortune Street games I have, or Adadaki Street. Itadaki? I hope I'm saying that right, I know I'm not, though. <laughs> but yeah, we have this one, the Vita now. Strangely enough, this one you can't actually cap, like, it's not compatible with the PlayStation TV, so I kind of just tried to capture the best using my phone on my Vita with the lights off so there weren't, wasn't too much glare. Won't talk too much about this, though, because, yeah, it's going to be kind of hard for people to see, I think, so... Yeah, but got this very cheap as... Yeah, let's move on to the next one. Fortune Street on the Wii, which, yeah, now I can talk more about this and it'll make a lot more sense. So, for Fortune Street, I'd like to describe these as a more in-depth version of Monopoly, right? As really fun multiplayer board game where... <laughs> The whole goal is, like Monopoly, you're buying up properties and trying to get as rich as ever, but there's a lot more to it because as you're buying properties, you're buying properties in different sections on the map, which increases the stock in those areas. As, yeah, you'll be playing the stock market here, going to the bank to purchase stock, so even though you might have your own kind of properties in one area, that area might be low on kind of stock value, so you might want to buy stock in other areas. And yeah, just like Monopoly, this game will ruin friendships and <laughs> ruin family gatherings, but it is just so much fun, you know, as yeah, so much can happen. The board itself can change on you, which yeah, that sucks when that happens, but. Wish we got more of these because the one I showed on Vita was kind of a remaster of a PS2 game that we never got, which was a Final Fantasy Dragon Quest crossover, and this one is Dragon Quest with Mario characters, right? And it's too bad we didn't get more of these because I think this would be a really cool multiplayer game, like if you could play online with people and everything like that, I think people would really go for it, but... Unfortunately, that's just not the case. Moving on though, we have Dragon Quest Builders here, so... This one is kind of like Dragon Quest meets Minecraft a little bit, just with more of a linear story t to it, as... I enjoyed this game for a bit, but I've never been into Minecraft. I tried to get into it quite a few times, but for whatever reason, I just could not get into it, and... This game, again, I had fun for a bit, like, I do like it more, not just because of the Dragon Quest skin, but I do like a more focused story told with this, but... Yeah, for a while, I just didn't really get through it, and then the one digital game I have is Dragon Quest Builders 2, which... This one is a lot more fun, I would say, because, yeah, for weapons and everything, they don't break on you, and... You also get a lot more kind of power-ups and everything, which I thought was pretty cool, so... Yeah, and I think this game you can play through the whole campaign co-op. I'm not sure. I know the first one you couldn't, so... Yeah, the second one, I believe you can play it all the way through co-op, and... Yeah, I found it a lot more enjoyable. I think I'm going to take my time to try and get through this game at some point because I do enjoy Dragon Quest Builders 2 quite a bit. Then we have Dragon Quest Swords, The Masked Queen, and The Tower of Mirrors, so... When I got this, you know, it was very cheap, and... When I first played it, I wasn't really into it, you know, this kind of first-person view, and... Everything just seemed kind of cheap and slow, right, but... 
you know, as I'm recording video for this video, like, <laughs> going back to it and everything, I'm like, this actually isn't too bad, like, I was having quite a bit of fun, the combat is quite, you know, interesting, I do wish you could use the nunchuck and the Wii remote, it's just the Wii remote as, yeah, so movement is kind of awkward, I found, but, you know, combat with kind of motion controls worked fairly well. There's definitely moments where it didn't work perfectly for me, but, you know, I think I'm going to go back and try and play more of this because it was a lot more fun than I thought it would be. And, yeah, it's one of the cheapest Dragon Quest spin-off games you can get, so... You know, if you see it out there, like, it might be worth checking out for yourself. Now we have Dragon Quest Treasure, so this is a spin-off starring Eric and his sister Mia from, yeah, Dragon Quest XI. Just as their kids, as, <laughs> you know, they're on kind of this Viking boat or whatever, as, yeah, th they release these animals that the Vikings captured and... You know, they're special, kind of magical animals, right, that's help them send them to a different world where, yeah, they're working together with monsters to collect as much treasure as possible now. I was having a lot of fun with this, but it's definitely one where I have to pace myself because it is very repetitive and there's moments where I got stuck in the story because I had, you know, like... There's some RNG elements in here, and yeah, I'm not a big fan of, you know, big RNG. It's not bad in this game, but it's, yeah, just, it is a big gripe I do have with JRPGs about gathering or getting certain monsters or whatever, right? But for what it is, you know, it's a solid adventure game, and yeah, I'm getting pretty close, I think, to being it, because I don't think it's too, too long, but yeah, I found it pretty solid. Then we have Dragon Quest Heroes Rocket Slime, so this is by far my favorite Dragon Quest spin-off game. I love this game so much, as I wish we got more of these, because in Japan, it's just known as the Slime series, as this is the second game of the series, because, yeah, there's a Game Boy Advance for, you know, the first game for Game Boy Advance, and then the third one for the 3DS, which, yeah, we didn't get either of them, and I'm so bummed about this, because this game, like, if you like your Zelda type adventures, then I think you would really enjoy this, because, yeah, it's essentially a Zelda type game where, <laughs> you know, you find, like, this flute and everything, and so you're trying to hide it, and, <laughs> yeah, get all stretched out, but then your kind of village gets attacked, and since of the shape you're in by inhaling the flute, <laughs> you're kind of thrown away because it's like, okay, you're not a regular person, like, throw that thing away. <laughs> So now you're on the journey to kind of rescue all your friends, and this flute is kind of magical, right? Where you get to summon this tank, which these tank battles are so, so fun. Absolutely love them. This game isn't super hard or anything either. It's pretty short, around 20 hours or so, but it's one of my favorite games to go back to every now and then. I... I don't know what it is about it, but I just adore this game so, so much. Then we have the two Dragon Quest Heroes games, so... Working my way through the first one currently as... You know me, I do love my Dynasty Warrior games, so yeah, this is right up my alley. Dragon Quest meets <laughs> Dynasty Warriors, right? Kind of that spin-off crossover type gameplay, right? And... <laughs> Uh, the first game though, like, the issue I have with that one is it's very just point A to point B, there's no exploration, right? Like, you have a world map and you just pick your location and go there, there's nothing to really do or explore or anything, and even when you, you know, haven't played too, too much, but it's... You know, probably a good, like, six, seven hours in, maybe ten hours. I, I'm not sure I played quite a bit anyways, but... 
uh, you know, even for bosses and all that, they're kind of taken down pretty much the same way. Like, there's certain ones where, yeah, you'll do extra damage depending on how you attack or whatever, but... Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> standardized Dynasty Warrior stuff, and then Di uh, sorry, Dragon Quest Heroes 2 was going to say Dynasty Warriors 2, but Dragon Quest Heroes 2, this one, I, you know, I want to be the first one, so I haven't played too, too much of this, probably about an hour or two, but the one thing that already I like more is it is a bit more of an adventure type deal, at least at the start, because, yeah, you're traveling through a field type area to get to kind of this castle town right and i really like that i like the idea of ter you know drain quests as still an adventure game but with the dynasty warriors kind of gameplay right so yeah i think i'll enjoy the second game more but like i said i want to beat the first one first <laughs> And to end it all off, we have the Dragon Quest Monsters game, so we'll start with the DS one I have here, Joker. As, yeah, I only have two here, but yeah, this was a really fun game, you know, your Pokemon-type RPG, right? As this one, you're arrested and, yeah, you're kind of forced into doing this monster contest thing, right? As, you know, that's what your character kind of wants anyways, right? So it's sort of win-win and... Yeah, a really solid game, you know, where instead of ca capturing Pokemon, you're capturing Dragon Quest monsters to fight with you, right? And yeah, really cool, you know, you can just tell them to fight individually or you can tell them, you know, give them orders and things like that. So yeah, really cool, really enjoyed this game on the DS. And then the final one we have here is Dragon Quest Monsters The Dark Prince, so... Yeah, this one I haven't dove too much into yet, but I do plan on as, yeah... What I played is really fun too, you know, <laughs> as the whole story of this one is you're trying to take care of your mom who's ill, and so you go and confront your dad who's a monster, and he puts a curse on you so you can't attack other monsters, and end up in this village area where they, the people there help you, kind of tame monsters and, <laughs> yeah, learn to fight and then you get into these Colosseum battles because you're trying to get fame so that your father will notice you, right, to try and help your mom and, yeah, just a lot of fun. Again, I'm early on so I can't say too much about this game, but the bit I played, I do enjoy this and I mean, if you're like me, and you like Dragon Quest and Pokemon, then this is a great mashup for you also. So, I hope you enjoyed this. What do you think? You know, what are your favorite Dragon Quest spin off games? Are there ones you have that I don't that I should check out? Let me know in the comments. And yeah, again, I hope you enjoyed. I'll probably do this for other. JRPG series too, like Final Fantasy and things like that, so look forward to that, and I will see you next time everyone. Alright, thanks, have a great rest of your day. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and comment, and subscribe if you want to see more, or if you just want to see any of my skits and then nothing else, and leave the video, that's fine too. <laughs> thanks everyone, take care.